What a swing, huh? What a swing. All right, so, you know, here, here's the thing. Without, without even looking at this yet, and I think you're doing a fantastic job of this today, what, what, one thing we're always trying to do with Ryan, and this is great for a lot of junior golfers, great for really anybody, this guy is young, flexible, he's growing quick, sometimes doesn't have complete control of all of this, all of his, of his entire body. What we're always trying to do is set him up in a position to make a nice tight turn to the top, taking away lateral movement and sliding off the golf ball and then sliding back through impact. That's a big one for him. And then when he gets moving laterally, a lot of times what happens is his arms and hands get loose and long at the top. And that's one thing I think you're doing a great job of today. I'm looking at this golf swing right away to start, and he's heard me harp on him week in and week out. Hey, big body turn, three-quarter swing at the top, shorter swing. So, so all right, guys, come on. let's check this out. This is good for everybody to see this. You know, one of the things I look for, I'm looking to make sure that that left hip for him gets a little closer to that line. I like to see his left hip about an inch away from the outside of his left foot, especially with those shorter irons. Now, here's the reason why. You know, when he, it, it, it looks good, I know, but when it's a little bit too centered with the hips, that just leads to a little bit of this sometimes, and then a little bit more having to post up and slide through the golf ball to get on your left side, where with this guy, just trying to get that hip a little bit more out it really helps his right knee stay on the inside of his right foot, mm -hmm. and that prevents any lateral movement. That's an incredible thought right there, by the way, for somebody who's trying not to move off the golf ball. If you're trying not to move off the golf ball, a lot of times people think about that lead leg, and they know what it does. It pulls the body forward, and it just feels really awkward because you're trying not to move off of it so desperately by holding this. Mm -hmm. This will remain in a good spot if the right knee stays right on the inside of the right foot. That right there, to me is a better thought for not swaying off the golf ball. I think it's more beneficial the more I watch more students. I see a lot of people and I give them both thoughts. Hey, left leg drill. Okay, repeat the feeling, keep that post. People don't continuously make a, 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 a better turn that way. They typically react better to seeing that right knee stay here and turning to the top, okay? So I've, I've really got this down now with how to teach this perfectly, <laughs> okay? Like there's only two, here, hold this real quick. There's only two components to the hip bump, two. Besides the obvious that the hip needs to go an inch this way, here's what you need to do. The hips remain square and the sternum stays still. So if the hips are square and the sternum is still and you shift the hips over, it's perfect, okay? So it's just the one inch towards the target, where you're seeing that right knee get a little bit more on the inside of the left. I'm sorry, the right knee on the inside of the instep of the foot. You see the sternum stay still, which creates the spine angle, and then that allows for that perfect turn to the top, okay? Mm -hmm. So when a person is trying to make that bump, you're just remembering that the hips remain square while doing so, and that only shifts one inch to the left. And the last part of that was keeping the sternum dead still as you do so. If you do those two things, you're in the right spot, okay? Mm -hmm. When he bumps the hip forward, the right knee gets a little bit more inside his right foot. Okay, let's see here. I make sure that I want to see this guy move a half a hip length over, okay? Not a full hip length over, and then rotate on top of it. Now, what I mean by that is this. Most people put themselves in a position at the top of the swing where from the outside of their left hip, they have to move more than a whole hip width over. And that right there was something that my mentor showed me as a sign that the golfer doesn't have the right amount of pressure in their feet on the inside of the right foot and the left foot and has to make too big of a lateral shift, which is going to then what you saw Ryan do. Mm -hmm. What'd you do? Stop. Yeah. And then what? Hands go through, which is where the left shot comes from. Yeah, so you guys can do that. You know, you can get a video and put a little line if you can, or if you can even, you know, you don't have to, you can just see where that outside of that left hip is, and then you can check and, and see if you're moving more than a full hip width over. And if it's only, you know, here's the outside of my hip. If I only go a half hip and I'm this way, you'll see that it'll match up a lot better with the arms on top of your left side and upper body and lower body working more together. Okay, so why would the hips stop? Why would the hands try to catch up? Well, because the hips are a little centered at the top, 
which is also why you get a little bit of this curve in the back right here. Okay, ready? Now from there, they have to push a little too far to the left to get back on the left side, and then they stall out because they're in front of the hands, and then you have to catch them up, and then everything finishes together. So that moment where these stop and there's not consistent rotation, the hands become a little overactive, right? Because what happens, you guys, when the target's there and our body stops? hands have to get the golf club to the target somehow, okay? So, with that being said, I think we should just bump the hips more. I think you're doing a great job not shifting that right knee outside the right foot, which is something he and I worked on a lot. So I think that's a lot better, but do it with the hips another inch to the left, okay? Mm -hmm. That right there, believe it or not, will put you in a position to where you won't have to make such a big lateral shift and everything will unwind on top of the golf ball, okay? So much better right there. This guy's hitting great. So basically, if you go this way, you, you remove, your spine angle starts getting really twisted, screwed mm -hmm. up. So you wanna keep that spine angle where it is, but then you wanna uh, kind of just make a post and your brace with your left and right foot, instead of just, you know, going like this and screwing up your entire posture. That's a huge point. People slide this way, and then it just looks like this. They like. It, you know, promote this reverse C, and that's what he said about the spine being twisted. You're leaving your spine where it is, and what he said is, you're just pushing this hip, boom. For some people, it feels, you know, they, they slide forward and they open up their hips. You don't want to see the right knee get in front of the left knee. It's keeping knees, you know, keeping these square and bumping forward. Yeah, what, what's, what's cool is, I watch enough of this guy's swing to see if he gets a little bit of the laterals and the hips stall and the hands toss it through and you'll see a little bit of the back and forth. We'll get a little bit of the rights and the lefts. When he is swinging like he did in those last couple, a little bit more posted on the lead leg, pressure more on the inside of that right foot with that hip bump, he starts to be able to rotate a lot more and his misses will only go a hair right and will not hit it left. <clears throat> That's important for the viewer to understand, and I, I sometimes take that for granted when I say that. When you get a player to miss one way, if, you, you know, if you're connecting the top of their swing, like Ryan's swing, that was beautiful, Ryan. Like Ryan's swing is very connected right now, meaning he's not out swinging his body with his arms. The constant rotation is what prevents the golf ball from going left, okay? So if he has connection and constant rotation, you're gonna find a lot of straight shots, and the only miss would be, if anything, a little bit to the right. Oh my gosh, dude, what a beautiful golf swing. Shot tracer. Hey Kev, how about this for a place to come to work every morning? Dude, I love it. Isn't it unbelievable? Yeah. Like, think about that. If you scroll, I mean, I'm never bummed coming to work in the first place. And I'm always excited about being out here and then I pop up over that hill right there, you know, you park on the side, you come down the path right there, and you just have a view from up there of everything. And uh, it's pretty cool for me too, because I actually grew up in the direction of this mountain over here, kind of right underneath that area there. So when I pop over the hill, I'm like, look out there, and then I, you know, look at now. So it's kind of like past, present, pretty cool, yeah. Just a, just a cool feeling at 6.45, 7 a.m. when you walk up and then all my, I always see my player hitting balls and warming up on the side of the hill here and it just, you know, and then you get the, the nuts who want to tee off like right now, which is just, <laughs> like I've noticed a few of my students down there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a cool vibe. At Forzac Golf, we take a lot of pride in having developed some of the best and most consistent golf swings on the planet. We do this through simplicity. Our Full Swing Masterclass will take you on a step-by-step easy to understand process on how to get your golf swing better than ever. Join the many before you who've utilized our Full Swing Masterclass to take their games to the next level and beyond.